Okay, so we're going to look at an IELTS task one topic, and it's going to be analyzing a bar chart. Okay, so we've got the bar chart here. Um, so let's take a look at the topic. The chart below shows information about changes in average house prices in five different cities between 1990 and 2002, compared with the average house prices in 1989. Summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features and make comparisons where relevant. Okay, so this is something often students forget to do when they're writing their task one is to make sure that you're using lots of comparison sentences. This is a really good chance for you to show different types of grammar, different types of sentence structures to increase your grammar score. So you can do lots of comparison words and comparison sentence structures. So let's take a look at this graph. So we can see that we've got a percentage change in house prices, okay? So we've got two sides of the graph. Um, we've got the percentage change, okay? So how much it increased or decreased compared to 1989. So we've got a zero here. So if it's on a zero, it means that the house price is exactly the same as 1989, okay? So we can see here that New York, the house price got cheaper, in Spain, the house price got more expensive, okay? In Tokyo, it got cheaper, okay? And then in Germany, it got more expensive, and then London, it got cheaper between 1989 and 1990, okay? I'm pretty sure I'm reading that right. So yeah, the average house price is under, so minus or plus, okay? Well, then when we look at 1996 to 2002, we can see that New York changes and gets more expensive, Um Madrid is still expensive, Tokyo is still cheaper, and um, Frankfurt has gone up, and London has gone up a lot, okay? So, one thing I always tell my students to check is check the dates, okay? So, everything that you'll write is, is you write is going to be in the past tense, okay? So, make sure that you go through, and when you're double-checking your answer after you've finished reading it, double-check that everything you wrote is in the past tense, Okay, and then you can figure out where your comparisons are going to be. So in this one, you can do change over time. So you're comparing between in 1990, 1995 and the change between then and 1996. And then you can also compare um, between individual cities. Okay, so the changes in New York. Okay, or so on. So the ones that I'm looking at to see, okay, well, what which ones do I think instantly sort of seem most interesting? Well, clearly in New York, it was cheaper and then it got more expensive. And then also in London, it uh, was cheaper and then got more expensive. Okay, so those two instantly to me, that's something that I would talk about. So one, I would talk about New York and London. That's the comparison to make. And then um, small increase stayed the same. Again, okay, stayed the same. Okay, and then we'll just do sort of like maintenance or small changes. So if I was structuring this, I would do my... So my first section would be my introduction, paraphrase the question, okay, and then um, give my overview, okay, of the main changes and trends, okay, and then I would in detail talk about New York and London, and then in the next detail talk about uh, the other three countries. Okay, so now we've taken a quick look at what we're going to do. Let's see what this candidate has done. Okay, the bar chart illustrates how average average prices of a house changed in five major cities between 1990 and 2002 in relation to the average house price in 1989, which is used as a benchmark. Okay, that's a very nice um, introduction sentence. I like the phrase, which is used as a benchmark. Okay, I like that use of the phrase. Benchmark is quite an advanced sort of sophisticated word to use, so I do like that. It divides the period into the six years starting in 1990 and the following seven years from 1996. Okay, we wouldn't need to say the here. It says it divides the period into six years starting in 1990 and the following seven years from 1996. Okay, but overall, this is a really nice um, introduction. It sort of explains the purpose of the graph, the meaning of the graph, and then it explains the time period. Okay, so I think that's a really good introduction. So now we've got the overview, okay? So always for, remember that for a task one, they always want to see an overview section giving the general trend or the major theme of the graph. So we've got overall, in the second period from 1996 to 2002, all cities except in the case of Tokyo at the higher average house prices than 1989, okay? 
So I think this is okay, but what I would like to see in this overview is then a comparison um, to the previous period in contrast, okay, and then give another general overview. So for me, I would say something like if I was going to do an overview overall, um, most cities uh, maintained either an increase or decrease in house cri prices except for New York and London, which experienced the most significant change. Okay, so the idea of the overview is you want to give a feeling for the general trend of the data or the general idea of the data. And sometimes it's more difficult depending on what they've given you. And this one, to be fair, is quite a difficult one to describe the trend because it's quite a complicated graph to understand and to explain. But I would just like to see this candidate extend their overview a little bit more. Okay, so then we're going to get into the detail section. In the first section, the biggest drops in house prices were observed in both Tokyo and London, where the average expense was 7% cheaper than it had been in 1989. Um, interestingly, while Tokyo still displayed the largest reduction in the next section, the house price in London was approximately 11% more expensive than in 1989, making it the biggest rate of change amongst the five cities. Okay, now this is a really nice detailed section. So why do I like this section? Okay, um, We've got a nice introduction sentence which sets up what we're going to talk about, okay? Um, and then they link it nicely together. Interestingly, okay, this is a nice way of like highlighting what's the key point I'm going to talk about interestingly or in particular um, or on closer inspection, it appears that. So there's lots of nice ways to introduce a uh, more specific detail. While Tokyo still displayed the largest reduction, so we've got lots of com comparison here, largest reduction, approximately 11% more expensive, making it the biggest rate of change among the five cities. And again, so you've the, the candidate has not just listed um, exactly what each price was, but they've given us some kind of interpretation and they've given us some example of what it means. So they could, some candidates would just stop here. Okay, this would be their full stop. The house price in London was approximately 11% more expensive than in 1989. The house price in Madrid was approximately 7% less expensive than in 1989. Okay, but what they this candidate has done really nicely is they've added in this extra sentence part here at the end, um, explaining why that why that's important. Why have they picked out that piece of data? Well, because this is the biggest rate of change among the five cities. Okay, so they've got a really nice combination of these specific numbers and specific figures that they've increased, they've in included. They've got nice comparison language going along. Their grammar is very good. And they've sort of explained a little bit more and expanded on the data. So all in all, I think this is a really good um, detail section. And I think this is probably going to be quite a strong essay. Let's look at the second detailed paragraph. In New York, the leading period, um, the leading period, this is unclear. I'm not sure what you mean by leading period. The first period, I think that maybe they're trying to say, but just from reading that, I don't know what they mean. So it's the first thing that they've written that I'm not really sure what they're trying to say. In New York, the leading period had 5% lower price and the subsequent period had 5% higher price than the price in 1989. Had, it should be, had a 5% lower price, had a 5% higher price than in 1989. So we're going to say the price again. Showing the completely opposite aspect, showing a completely opposite aspect. Aspect again, awkward word choice. I can I can feel what they mean. Um, I would probably say perspective. I guess um, Madrid and Frankfurt were the only cities where the average cost of houses increased against the benchmark year in both two periods. You don't need to say in both two periods, in both periods. However, whereas the second period became more expensive than the previous period in Madrid, the Frankfurt's, Frankfurt's house price growth rate diminished over the last two periods. Over the, the house growth rate diminished over the two periods. I would just say maybe something like consistently. just to explain a little bit more clearly what they mean. I think this is um, a little bit weaker than the previous body. We've got a couple of awkward um, vocabulary choices and a couple more grammar errors, but they're doing the same style um, as the previous one. But what I would like to see is, is some more specific figures. 
Um, so they've they've described it, but they they don't have any numbers. So I'd like to see them add in some numbers into this section to sort of show that they're doing specific detail. Um, and there's a couple of awkward word choices, and they keep saying periods over the two periods, the second period, the first period, the over the two periods. I feel like they're repeating the word period too much. Um, and it would be it would be better to paraphrase one of these with just just tell me the year. Or just uh, mix it up, say period, and then say in the seven-year period or in the six-year period or between these years. So show me a little bit more variety. So it's interesting because actually this one's a little bit weaker than the first body, and I'm wondering whether they spent more time writing this and then they kind of rushed a little bit more towards the end. Um, so that's going to um, weaken the score a little bit, but I think overall a pretty strong answer. So in terms of task achievement... Um, I probably would give a 6.5. Like I said, I'd like to see the overview expanded a little bit more um, and some more numbers included in the second body. But overall, this was very good. Coherence and cohesion. Um, everything was linked together very nicely. There was a logical flow to it. They sort of discussed the data in a logical way and used paragraphs. So I would probably give a 7 for cohesion and coherence. In terms of vocabulary, they're let down by some of the awkward vocabulary choices in the second body. So I would probably give them a sort of a 6.5. I could see an argument someone might want to bump them up to a 7 because I really did like phrases like benchmark year I thought was very good. And the biggest change of rate among the five cities. So they had some really nice um, phrases and nice vocabulary in both those. But I'll be a little bit strict and say 6.5. Um, and for grammar, we did have some simple sentences. We did have some more complex sentences. The grammar was generally very, very good until the final paragraph where there was some confusion. So I'm going to, I would give a 6.5 for grammar just because of these, a couple of periods where it wasn't quite clear what they meant. So that means they're coming at an overall 6.5. To be totally honest, I could see the vocabulary going up to a seven, to, you know, depending on if someone wanted to argue with me about that. Uh, and maybe also the task achievement going up to a seven, if someone was, wanted to sort of debate me about that. Um, I would say conservatively, 6.5 is totally possible in, in the real exam. You've got a good chance of going up to a seven. Um, but overall, I thought this was a very nice task one answer. The graph is not that easy to talk about, um, but this candidate has done a really nice job of discussing it.